they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. I don't know about you, but I've been in some dark places. I'm glad to be in the light. Hallelujah. I ain't got everything all together, but the Lord is still working down on the inside. Ah, down in my soul, the Lord has truly been good to me. Amen. 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 I don't know. Y'all ain't convincing me that he's been good to you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, that's what I'm talking about. We're supposed to celebrate Jesus on every occasion we can get. Amen. Because uh, he's, he's an awesome and wonderful God. Uh, what, if he did it? <laughs> what if they'd have had you up on the cross? Amen. What if they'd have had you on the cross this morning? Hallelujah. 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 Would you be not saying nothing or would you be crying your heart out? Down in my soul, he's been good to me. Uh, down in my soul, the Lord has been good to me. I don't know about you, but I'm glad to be here this morning. Glad to be in the house of the Lord. Glad to be in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's celebrate him on today. Amen. Each and every day. Hallelujah. But when it, when it come around to Sunday, we should always have a special celebration in our heart. I say we should always have a very special celebration in our heart. Hallelujah. Our praise leader is coming. Amen. She's going to lead us in song. And immediately after that, we're going to have Evangelist Marilyn Spann come and lead us in prayer. Amen. Are y'all ready for church this morning? Are y'all ready for church this morning? Hallelujah. This, this, is, this, this is the beginning of our week. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on. Do you love Jesus on this morning? Hallelujah. I'm like Elder Smith. Y'all ain't convincing me. Come on. Clap your hands. Oh, God. Magnify the Lord, for He is worthy to be praised. Oh, come, let us magnify the Lord, for He is worthy to be praised. Hosanna, blessed be the rock, blessed be the rock of my salvation. Oh, come, let us magnify the Lord, for he is worthy to be praised. Oh, come, let us magnify the Lord, for he is worthy to be praised. I'm singing, Hosanna, blessed be the rock. Blessed be the rock of my salvation. Hosanna! Blessed be the rock. Blessed be the rock of my salvation. I'm singing Hosanna! Oh, blessed be the rock. Blessed be the rock of my salvation. Hosanna! Blessed be the rock, blessed be the rock of my salvation. Come on, put your hands together. Oh, blessed be the rock of my salvation. Hosanna. Oh, blessed be the rock, blessed be the rock of my salvation. One more time. Rock of my salvation, Hosanna! Blessed be the rock, blessed be the rock of my salvation. 
God. Come on and praise him in this place. Come on and open your mouth and give God praise. Come on and give him praise. Hallelujah. He's worthy this morning. He's the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And we give him glory this morning. Hallelujah. Bless his name. Hallelujah. Blessed be the rock of my salvation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can we all stand for prayer this morning? Hallelujah. Dear gracious Father, Lord God, first of all, God, we just want to say we love you. We thank you for being together in the house one more time. Hallelujah, Lord God. Lord God, we thank you for all that you're going to do, Lord God. For all that you've done, Father God. Lord God, we thank you for being our protector, Lord God. Our comforter, Lord God. Our provider, hallelujah, Lord God. For everything that you've done, Father God. Lord God, as we go forth today, Lord God, we pray that you have your way, Lord God. Have your way in the service, Lord God. Do a new thing today, Lord God. Rain down the anointing power, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Lord God, bring in the Holy Ghost as never before, God. Lord God, we pray that you break shackles today, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, break chains, Lord God. Whatever we're going through right now, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, we bind and rebuke the spirit of, of boredness, Lord God. We bind and rebuke the spirit, Lord God, of drowsiness and tiredness, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God. For we come into your house to give you praise, God. We came to give you glory, Father God, to lift you up in the name of Jesus, Father God. Lord God, have your way, Lord God. We know that you can, Lord God. Lord God, we pray right now for all those who are sick, hallelujah, the shut-in, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Those who are in prisons, hospitals, Lord God, heal, deliver, set free, Lord God. We come to take back what the canker worm took from us, Father God. Hallelujah, Lord God. We win, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God. You win, hallelujah, God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God. We pray, Lord God, for Brother Bobby right now in the name of Jesus, Lord God, from head to toe, Lord God. Lord God, regulated right now in the name of Jesus. Not just him, Lord God, for all your people, Lord God. Lord God, once again, we thank you for the blood you shed on Calvary, Lord God. We thank you for the blood today, Father God. Where would we be without the blood, Father God? We give you honor, praise, and glory, God, today. And we thank you as we go further in the service that you have your way. Bless the speaker. Bless Bishop. Hallelujah. Bless everybody in the name of Jesus, Lord God. As you do, Father God, we give you praise again, honor, and glory. And it is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen, Father God. And now we call Elder Chris Halfacre. Thank you, Jesus. Glory, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise the Lord, saints. Praise the Lord, saints. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are y'all happy to be in the house of the Lord? Amen. Amen. I am here to read scripture. And our scripture reading, if you all will remain standing, will be coming from Isaiah chapter 41, verses 10. And we're going to read it in the King James, and then I'm going to follow it up with the Amplified. Once again, our scripture reading is going to be coming from Isaiah, chapter 41, verse 10. When you have it, say amen. Okay, I'm going to wait a little bit longer. Once again, we stop at the commas, semicolons, and uh, pause at the period stop. All right. All right. Isaiah chapter 41, verse 10, together now. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea. I will help thee, yea. I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. And the Amplified Version is, Do not fear anything, for I am with you. Do not be afraid, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Be assured I will help you. I will certainly take hold of you with my righteousness, right hand, and hand of justice, of power of victory, of salvation. 
we have read Isaiah chapter 41, verse 10 in the King James Version and the Amplified Version. May the Lord add a blessing to the readers, hearers, and most of all the doers of his word. You're now in the hand of our announcer, Mother Fear Drew. Praise the Lord again, saints. We welcome you to our Palm Sunday service. We know this is the Sunday that leads up to the crucifixion of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We would like to thank all of you for tuning in this morning. And we'd also like to thank those of you who are in the sanctuary. Amen. Amen. If you are in Fort Wayne, our Fort Wayne area, our live streams are open. And you are welcome to come join us in our regular services. We are still observing social distancing. And you may be required to take a temperature check at the door. Amen. This morning, we are starting the celebration of our 29th pastoral anniversary. Let's give it up for our pastor. Amen. For standing on the wall for 29 years. And we would like to thank, thank Pastor DeWitt Jackson and his lovely wife for coming over the highways to start off our anniversary. Amen. The theme for our pastoral anniversary is celebrating strong and courageous leaders. The subtopic is you've come this far by faith. This theme comes from Isaiah 41 and 10. Next Sunday we will be favored with our Easter program. So we would like for all of you to come out next week and help us celebrate with the children because they have been working hard and we want to see what they have for you on next week. Our next guest uh, on the third Sunday will be Bishop Herbert Coates. Amen. So we want you to just kind of come along and join us all month long. We have begun our uh, survey through the epistles of the New Testament. In this month of April, we are continuing in Romans. This Wednesday, we will be surveying chapter 8. So if you have not read chapter 8 of Romans, that will be our topic for Wednesday. Next week will be chapter 9. If you are not on our email list and you want to go through the epistles with us, you can comment below with your email address or you can email us at AbundantLove at Frontier.com to receive a bi-weekly study outline. If, you're, uh, if you would like to join us in our services on Sundays, our live stream Sunday school is at 9 a.m. And our in-class sessions for Sunday school is at 9.50 a.m. Our regular morning worship normally starts at 1045. We will be starting at 11 o'clock this month due to our anniversary. On Wednesdays, we have intercessory prayer at 6 o'clock p.m and our Disciples Academy Bible Study starts immediately following at 6.30 p.m. If you happen to miss one of our services, we are archived on Abundant Love Church Facebook page, and also you can find us on YouTube channel AL Ministries. That's capital A, capital L Ministries. On Monday mornings, we have Motivating Moments by our bishop, and that normally starts at about 8 a.m., so you can view that for your, to help with your week. Also, um, if you would like to make, sorry, I'm, I'm kind of out of breath today. Uh, if you would like to make a contribution to our church, you may do so using Cash App, and that's dollar sign Abundant Love Church. You may also give through Givelify, at Abundant Love Church, but make sure you put Fort Wayne, Indiana. There are several Abundant Love Churches. If you would like to mail your contribution, you may do so using Post Office Box 6577, Fort Wayne, Indiana, 46896. If you are in our area, you may drop it off at 2615 New Haven Avenue, Fort Wayne, Indiana. If you would like to make a special contribution to our pastor, 
His cash app is dollar sign Pastor GLB2. And that's all lowercase letters. Our second covering include Elder Robert Bush, Travion Hilliard, Nathan Lake, Kiara Casey. We also would like to continue special prayer for Raphael Martin and Sean Pearson. Birthdays this week. On the 29th, we had Sister Kelly Madden and our own evangelist, Carolyn Surreal. Amen. We want to wish them a very happy birthday. Amen. These are all our announcements. I would like you to please govern yourselves accordingly. At this time, we're going to call for our praise team. Come on, put your hands together as the praise team makes their way. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We come to praise the Lord on today. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Lord, we praise your name.
praise a holy name. We 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 praise a holy name. Put your hands
can't forget the day. Amen. He rose. He rose early one Sunday morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we thank God for that. Amen. Amen. At this time, we want you to prepare for your offering. Amen. We want to get the man of God up. He drove a long ways, but we want to get him up in good time. Amen. 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 Uh, so if you would prepare yourself, prepare yourself to give. Bishop is coming to have a few words. Amen. We ain't going to work him today too hard. All right. Amen. Praise <laughs> the Lord. Come on, clap your hands in here. All right. That's good because I asked you to, but how many know the Lord been good to you? Come on, lift that hand and say, Lord, you've been good. Now give him a wave offering. Amen. Certainly we bless the Lord today and we're certainly happy to have each of you here this morning. I see, I see first redeemed here this morning in our midst. Amen. And then all the way from Michigan City, Indiana, uh, my, I call him my good friend. Amen. Pastor DeWitt Jackson and his lovely wife, Sharon, they're here. Come on, let's give him a Fort Wayne, Indiana welcome. I said a Fort Wayne, Indiana welcome. If you have not heard him, you are in for a treat. And if you have heard him, you get seconds today. Amen. Great man of God, great musician, great singer, great preacher, great friend. And so I want you to prepare yourselves to give today, even though this is an anniversary. Uh, I've asked the Lord to make our anniversaries revivals. How many know the church need reviving now? Amen. Look at somebody and say, the church needs a revival. And say, let it start in me. Many times when we ask for revival, we just go to pointing that out what other people are doing. 
But you need to turn that finger around, look right at home, so that we can do better in the service of the Lord. Amen? All right. As you are giving today, uh, if you're going to use cash and you're going to use a check, you need an envelope today. And so Sister Natasha is here. She's got two. Uh, looks like it's Ladies' Day again. Amen. In the service of the Lord. How many know the Bible says we train them up in the way they should go? Amen. So they're here to help you this morning. If you need an envelope, if you will kindly raise your hand at this time, they will come to your location, bring you an envelope. If you make a check out today, make that check payable to the Abundant Love Church. Amen, somebody. If it's for a specific date, circle that date, and we will honor the date that you circle. Ain't nobody saying nothing in here. Somebody know what that means, though. Amen. Amen. So if you circle that date, we'll honor that date. Um, if you are going to uh, use your debit card or your credit card, there is a card slider. Sister Natasha Hillier has a card slider for you. Uh, she will actually come to your location and take your contribution there. If you need the card slider, if you just kind of raise your hand now so she can survey the room to see you. Okay, I've seen a few hands go up. Um, so she'll come to your location. She will take your contribution at that location. And then lastly, there are two ways you can give. Uh, even those of you that are watching by stream today, you can use your mobile phone to give. There are two applications that we use that you can give. The first one is Givelify, and we can be found as the Abundant Love Church in Fort Wayne, Indiana. Uh, the secretary and the announcer mentioned previously that if you just bring up Abundant Love, there are quite a few Abundant Loves. It's a very popular name. That means it's inspired by the Holy Ghost. I just thought I would throw that in there too. Amen. In the mouth of two or three witnesses, but we got a great cloud of witnesses because how many know that God's love is more than enough? That's what abundant means. And love, not our love, but the love of God. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples if you have one, one to another. So uh, give a fi. That's Abundant Love Church in Fort Wayne, Indiana. And then, of course, last but not least, uh, you can use the application called Cash App. And our Cash App address is dollar sign Abundant Love Church. And so you can make that contribution. I wouldn't dare finish this offering without hearing some encouragement from our speaker. Would you all receive Pastor Superintendent DeWitt Jackson with a hearty amen? Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise God. I, I, I'm just honored to be here. We certainly thank God for, amen, my friend Bishop Gary Bush. Amen. Let's praise God for him. Amen. I'm, amen. I, I, I know that, I, know that I, I am on an assignment this morning. It's got to be an assignment. Amen. This is Palm Sunday and I'm here in Fort Wayne. So this is an assignment. <laughs> I'm on an assignment this morning. And so we certainly thank God for all of you in your pers perspective places. Uh, I want to encourage you to give. I'm going to be sharing something that I really believe that it's the law that will be amen given to me to give to you in regards to amen just in celebrating a leader. But, uh, amen, we want to encourage you. We came to give and to be a blessing. Praise God. As a matter of fact, we come in uh, two settings from the church, amen, and then personally from us to our, to our bishop, to amen. Because I love, I love this man. I said I love this man. Amen. When I got the call, uh, I, I just wanted to... I just cleared everything just to be here. Amen. There's not too many people I do that for, but this man I would. I, okay, y'all didn't get that. I said not too many people, but this man, I'll do that. Amen. 
So I thank God and we want to encourage you to give and to be a blessing today. Would you all do that? Amen. Be a blessing today. Thank you. Bishop. All right. God bless you. Everybody ready to give? Okay. Whatever you have, it's a, if it's an envelope or a card or your phone, uh, as an act of faith, why don't you just ho hold it up right now? I believe the word of God. What about you? When you give, you initiate the cycle of God giving back to you. Give and it shall be given unto you. How? Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. Watch, don't miss this. Shall men give into your bosoms. So when you give to God, God is going to move somebody to bless you. He's going to bless you through somebody. Look, look at the person right next to you. It might be that person right there today. Amen. You never can tell. All right, let's pray. Father, in the matchless and the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we thank you for this opportunity to give because it is an opportunity. It is one of the occasions that we have to obey your word, knowing that there is a promise attached to obedience. You said it's better to obey than to sacrifice, but when we obey and sacrifice, you return it to your people. And I pray today, not just for these in the sanctuary, but these that are watching by stream as they give today, just fulfill your word to them. Give it back to them, some 30, some 60, and even 100 fold. In Jesus' name and the Lord's people said, thank God. Amen and amen. All right, they are coming to serve you. <coughs> okay. Okay, how many know every praise belongs to God? Okay. As they receive your offering, <laughs> if you know it, sing it with us. Every praise. Every praise is to our God. Come on. Every word of worship with one accord. Every praise. Every praise. Every praise is to our God. Sing hallelujah. Sing hallelujah. To our God. Glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. Come on, church. To our God. Every praise. Every praise. Every praise. Every praise is to our God. Oh, yeah. Every praise. Every praise. To our God. Is to our God. Every word of worship. Every word of worship. Come on. With one accord. Every praise. Every praise. Every praise. Every praise. To our God. It's to our God. Oh, yeah. Sing hallelujah. Sing hallelujah to our God. Come on, drummer. Come Glory on, drummer. Hallelujah. It's to our God. Every praise. Every praise. Every praise. To our God. It's to our God. All right, three parts. Sing hallelujah. Sing hallelujah. Sing hallelujah to our God. Glory, hallelujah, it's to our God. Every praise, every praise, every praise, every praise to, our God. to our God. One more time, sing hallelujah. Sing hallelujah. Sing hallelujah. Sing hallelujah. Come on, drummer. To our God. Glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah, it's to our Singing it. Who's singing it? God our Savior. God my Savior. God my healer. God my deliverer. Yes, He is. Yes, He is. God my Savior. God my Savior. God my healer. Come on, church.
praise, let's praise. Every praise is to our God. Every word of worship with one accord. It's to our God. Come on, clap your hands in here. Let me tell you what's. Let me tell you what's happening in here. You all are watching what's going on instead of praising God. You shouldn't just be singing that. You ought to be praising. Come on yes, now, open yes, your yes. mouth and praise God. Hallelujah! Look at somebody say every praise. Every praise. Every praise. Every praise, every praise, every praise, every praise, every praise. Yes, yes, yes. All right, clap your hands right there. All right, Hallelujah. now high five somebody. Say every praise belongs to God. Amen. Every praise, every praise belongs to God. God bless you. You may be seated. Thank you for your contributions on today. At this time, I'm going to return the service into the hands of our master of ceremonies. Would you all receive uh, Elder Greg Smith with a hearty amen? Amen. Amen. Somebody say every praise. Every praise. Every praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to have a couple of quick tributes. Amen. Before we put the man of God up. Bishop will be coming back to intro, properly introduce him. Amen. Great man of God, I tell you, um, we're in for a treat once again. Amen. Amen. At this time, we're going to have tributes by Deacon and Mother Irma Thomas. Amen. The program calls for three minutes. After that, it would be Sister Monique Glassby. Amen. 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 Praise him. Praise him. Yes, I'm Deacon Thomas and some Mother Thomas. We're up here to say a few words, but I'd like to let you know that we're a little prejudiced. <laughs> we think our bishop is the best in town. I said, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. 29 years, that's a long time, isn't it? 29 years is a long time. I think Mother Thomas and I, 29 years. Today is our anniversary. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Pastor, you know anything that we got, you got. Yes, sir. We're here forever. As long as forever. Yeah. I don't talk too much, and my voice is kind of bad, but I got somebody that can talk. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you, she was in the hospital, and uh, the doctor told me, he said, whatever you do, don't stop talking. You got to talk. I said, what? I said, you don't stay with her. <laughs> <laughs> but, but she can talk. Yes, sir. Here she is. Praise the Lord, everybody. I am not up here to sell you a perfect man, but he is a good man. Our pastor, our teacher, our bishop. 
He is a good man. You won't find a second like him in the city of Fort Wayne, Indiana. Because Psalms 37 and 37, it says, Mark the perfect man. I am not telling you that he is perfect. It said, Mark the perfect man and behold the upright, because the end of that man is peace. He is not perfect. He may be an upright man before God, but he is a good man. All right, we praise God. Thank you all for your comments, for your tribute. And yes, he is a great man. I say, yes, he is a great man. Yeah. Amen, amen. He's been a mother. I mean, he's been a brother. He's been a father. He's been my friend. He's been my pastor. He's been my bishop, amen. All of that, amen. And I praise God for putting him in my life, amen, amen. At this time, Evangelist Glasby is coming. All right. Whew. All right. Praise the Lord, saints. The Lord. Amen. It's always, it's good to be home. Amen. Amen. It's good to be home. And just um, giving all glory and honor unto God, I was asked to give tribute to our bishop. Amen. Amen. And it's an easy thing to do. Um, I just thank God. I was telling him, I was speaking with him the other day, and I said, I've known you for more over half of my life. Um, and I said, that's a blessing because you think about how many people have been consistent and steady in your life, half of your life. And I'm 51, I'm not ashamed to say that. Um, and, and I just thank God because he's been consistent. He's been a friend. He's been my pastor. Um, even when the Lord saw fit to have me go and take care of my uncle for a while, and then transition me to New York for a while. He's always been there. And everybody can't say that. You can be in the house with your pastor and they're not there. Um, but he's, he's a praying man. He's a man of integrity. He's a man that loves God's people. That means a lot, amen? He's not a hireling. He's, he, he's, he has our best interests. And everybody cannot say this in the, in the end times because we do realize we're in the end times. He is a man that teaches you the word. Not only teaches you the word, but he lives the word. Amen. Everybody can't say that about their pastor. He is a man that prays for you. He is a man that stands in a gap for you. He is a man that is just consistent and that word keeps coming to me consistent and it is so important to have people like that in your lives especially as leaders um and i just say i thank god for you pastor um he's seen me through a lot he's seen me through the loss of my mother my brother being murdered the loss of my grandmother the, my losses my own personal losses but he's always been there he's always been there as a support and i just appreciate you I wish you Godspeed, and I see greatness before you, Pastor. God bless you. Love you all. I'm just, I'm just excited to hear Pastor DeWitt, too. Amen. So you all just join in. This is a celebration. Amen. This is a celebration. We're here to celebrate this man of God. Amen. And we want to make sure we do that on today. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Once again, since I got the mic, he's been an awesome man in my life. Uh, um, when I started trying to court my wife, I didn't go to her mother or father. I went to him and asked him, did he think it was going to be all right? I didn't want to mess up now. I was new to the church. <laughs> and he said, yeah, sure. Later on, I found out he'd already picked me for her anyway. <laughs> And I'm going to throw this in there while I got the mic. When I, when I was pursuing her and we would go on a date or something, they started this uh, dating club, date patrol, that's what it was. And at a certain time, her phone would start ringing. <laughs> her phone would start ringing. If she didn't answer, they'd leave a, 
message that uh, <laughs> uh, Sister Kyra, it's about time for all saved women to be at home. <laughs> <laughs> it's about 10.30. <laughs> and uh, to go a little farther when we decide to marriage, and he counseled us, and he said he wanted to write our vows. No problem. And they were great vows, all 45 minutes of them. <laughs> but he loved us. And he poured it out of his heart. And we, we, we're thankful for him and all that he's done and thank him for the ministry he has provided for us. At this time, we're going to call to the pulpit Bishop Gary L. Bush singing. Amen. Amen. All right. Praise the Lord, saints. Amen. All right. Certainly, we thank the Lord for all the wonderful things that have been said. I've certainly enjoyed it. I've been encouraged. Um, everybody needs encouragement. I said everybody needs encouragement. Amen. So certainly we thank you for your encouragement. Thank the Lord for being consistent, a supplier for us for all these years. And it has come time now for the most important part of any service. And so I want you all to tune in because man doesn't live by bread alone. Man really lives the kind of life he should live when the word of God is administered into your life. How many know you need the word? Amen. Amen. Faith comes by hearing and hearing comes by the word of God. And so we have to have the word of God to build a faith so that we can lay hold on that abundant life. But how can they hear without a preacher? And how can they preach except they be sent? I am here to let you know this morning we have a God-sent preacher in our midst. Amen. Amen. I'm not a jealous man, but I've been coveting some of this man's gifts for a long time. I've had the opportunity to work with him. Uh, I almost said how many years, but it's quite a few years, uh, some decades uh, involved in it. The Bible says that he gave some one talent, he gave some two and some five. Uh, Pastor DeWitt Jackson is absolutely in the five gift territory. Amen. He's a singer, he's a songwriter, he's a psalmist. He'll pray you into another dimension. He's a musician, director, arranger, but he is a teacher and a preacher of the word of God. And he loves God people. Amen. I don't know how many pastors would leave their own church to be in someone else's churches on Palm Sunday and around Easter. But every time we call him, he comes. And so we're certainly happy to have him. He's not just the proud pastor of Revival Center Church of God in Christ in Michigan City, Indiana. He is a district superintendent in the, I believe, the second jurisdiction. Second Jurisdiction, Churches of God in Christ, State of Indiana. He is not only known throughout the state, he is known nationally. Amen. Years ago, we had what was called the Midwest Music Conference, which comprised jurisdictions from Illinois, Iowa, Wisconsin, Indiana, and Minnesota. They would bring singers and songwriters and arrangers uh, every year. And this man uh, wrote songs that so moved people in the services and in the rehearsals that they nominated and elected his song, Song of the Year, over five or six states. And so I would that you give him. He might, he might I know he's been in revival all week, but he might sing something. He might sing, he might sing something today. So I would that every word carrier would stand to your feet and let's receive a superintendent, his lovely wife. How did I not mention his lovely wife? How did I not do that? Amen. Sharon uh, uh, Jackson has been a longtime friend for many, many, many years. And so we certainly have happy to have them in our midst today. Uh, 
would you raise your right hand and receive Superintendent DeWitt Jackson with a hearty amen. Come on, let's give God praise. Amen. Oh, we can do better than that. Let's give him praise. That's it. Come on. That's it. That's it. Come on, give him praise. Come on and give him praise. That's it. That's it. Come on, give him praise. Open up your mouth and give him praise. That's it. Come on, sound man. Give me just a little bit in the mind, a little bit more high. Come on, give him praise. Come on. Come on and praise him. Come on and praise him. Come on and praise the Lord, everybody. We got breath in our bodies. Let's give him praise. Because he's worthy to be praised. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Before you take your seat, just go and get out of your seat if you don't mind and inconvenience yourself and go to two people and just tell them that God got a blessing with your name on it. Amen. There is a blessing with your name on it. Sound man, just give me a little bit more high, just a little high. That's it. There we, mm -hmm. there we go. Yeah, we're getting, that's it. God got a blessing with your name on it. Yeah, there's a blessing. As a matter of fact, you got a blessing for just pressing. Like the dew in the morning Gently rest upon my heart Like the dew in the morning Gently rest upon my heart Take me just a little bit There we go That's it Like the dew in the morning <laughs> Gently rest upon my heart. Y'all praying with me this morning. Like the dew in the morning. Gently rest upon my heart. Whoa. Oh, yeah. Like the dew in the morning. Gently rest upon my heart. Oh. Like the dew in the morning, gently rest upon my heart. Oh, and we say, and we say, rest, Jesus, rest, rest. Like the dew in the morning, rest. Come on, rest. Rest like the dew. One more time. Rest, whoa, whoa. Rain, 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 rain. Yes, sir. Like the dew in the like morning. Like the dew in the morning. <laughs> Gently rest upon my heart. That's it. Come on, clap your hands if you don't mind. Like the dew in the morning, gently rest upon my heart. Like the dew in the morning, gently rest upon my heart. One more time. Like the dew in the morning. Gently rest upon my heart. I want y'all to sing it. Y'all sing it. Let y'all sing. Oh, like the dew in the morning. Gently rest upon my heart. Like the dew. Like the dew in the morning. Gently rest upon my heart. Oh, come on, say that. Come on. Oh, Say rest, rain. Come on, rain. Yes, rain. Come on, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, rain, rain. And rain. rain. And rest, rain. And rain. Yeah, 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 yeah. Come on, rain. Come on, rain. 
person right now. Like the dew in yeah. the morning. No, no, no. Get the rest of my heart. Could y'all take it up a half step? Like the dew in yeah. the morning. Oh, can we rest upon my heart? Oh, don't do it. Like a dew in the morning. Can we rest upon my heart? This is one more time. Let's take it out. Oh, it's a rest. excited praise God when your excitement get excited you excited amen praise God we're here on this morning first of all to give God the glory amen I said we're here first of all to give God the glory and then we're here to celebrate on today amen we're here to celebrate this God man when I say God, amen, we don't make a, a, a God out of a man, but we celebrate the God that's in the man. And God is in this man. Would you help me celebrate properly this man of honor? Would you mind standing to your feet? And let's just make some stadium noise for the man of the hour. Come on, musicians. Y'all got to come on. We praise God for the gift. The leadership gift that's in this God man and we praise God for him you may be seated amen and to all of the ministering gifts amen today that represents the kingdom in your perspective ministries amen I want to certainly thank God for my wife who traveled with me she thought it not robbery me to go by myself amen and so she came along my partner came along with me on this morning and I tell her places I go I said it look like I just preach better when she's there around so amen but I appreciate her she is a miracle amen she's a miracle 
And I thank God I'm holding on to my miracle. Amen. And I will certainly thank God for her and to all of the people of God. God bless you. Amen. A praise God. To what the church mother, Mother Smith, Mother. And she working. Okay. Tell her don't work too hard because she, amen, she's the church mother, right? That's the church mother. Amen. Church mother. Years ago, the church mother acted as, we got administrators now. But years ago, the church mother was the administrator. Uh, she is okay. The church mother years ago, the church mothers were the, the administrators. They were the one to call, Amen. Before the pastor called you, they were the one. Those old mothers, they would call you, and they would tell you, "Baby, come on, uh, uh, Deacon Deacon Ray, did you get up? Or Deacon uh, Johnson, did you get up? Make sure the church is taken care of before service. Cut the heat up." Um, uh, make sure that, the, that they shovel outdoors if it's snow outdoor. The, the church mothers was doing that. <laughs> Amen. We have the administrators now that do. Praise God. And thank God for the administrators. But those church mothers, praise God. Y'all ain't saying nothing. The church mothers did that, that work. Amen. And the church mothers, now I'm going to get in trouble, but the church mothers wasn't on payroll then doing that, y'all. <laughs> We got, I'm going to get in trouble, but we got, but, and, and, and let me say that, and we should pay, amen. The Bible gives credence to that, that we should pay those who service in the kingdom, amen. The, did you not know that Levites, they serve the temple, amen, they serve the temple, and that was their responsibility. The, the pre Levites and the priests worked in conjunction to make sure that the service of God uh, was performed and to the highest of, of its level and so um, it was the responsibility of the Levites to make sure praise God that they would be in order check it out in the book of, of uh, Chronicles you find out that the Levites and the musicians all of them they were together amen and they were on one accord Amen. And they came with one sound. I mean, they were together. The choir had their cast socks on in white. Amen, y'all. Read your book. Praise God. And they were all together. Amen. Praise God. And so, uh, uh, and from that, when they were unified, praise God. And then you felt, the, it's, the Bible says that they were all together. And the glory of the Lord, amen, filled the temple. Praise God, where they were all together. Amen. And they came together so that the Bible said that, uh, that the, the minister or the priest could not minister for the glory of the Lord. Amen. And it wouldn't be something, praise God, when the musicians and the, or the minstrels, that we call them, praise God, the Levites, if you would, praise God, be praising God and so until... Amen. It's almost the, where well, the minister can't almost minister because of the presence of the Lord. So we celebrate. We thank God for these musicians. We thank God for the Levites. Give the Levites musicians and those who serve in their capacity to help ministry. Amen. Thank God for, amen, this minister, Elder Smith. Thank God for Elder Smith. And I know the praise God. Praise God. Yes, he is a good man. Amen. You need good men around you. Amen. You need good men, praise God, around you. Praise the name of the Lord. And so we thank God for him. Uh, I certainly praise God. We, Y'all pray for me because we've been, we just come out of uh, our workers meeting all week long. I did our morning manna for the Indiana Second Jurisdiction. Praise God. And they was working me. This week, well, last week, I would say now, because we're in a new week, but they was working me day and night. And I told someone that uh, one of the other bishop friends called me, and I said, Doc, I couldn't talk much. I said, Daddy, I'm literally working uh, almost morning, noon, and night. <laughs> Amen. But you know something? Let me tell you. I'd rather work for the kingdom of God. They used to tell us, Amen, you don't rust out you wear out. Amen. You don't rust out. You what? You wear out. Amen. And they taught us whatever your hands find to do, do it with all thy might. Praise God. And so, amen. I just thank God for the opportunity to be able to serve. Amen. amen. Praise God. And so we doing this this past week. Praise God. 
And then uh, when I got the call in regards to coming, we were in Virginia. And uh, when I saw uh, Kyra Smith, Mother Smith, praise God, I stepped out of the service because we was actually at home going service. And I stepped out and I saw and I said, oh, I got to I got to get this call. I got to get this call. <laughs> And then when she began to call, you know, with that, uh, that uh, real sweet uh, voice, soft voice, that gets you, you know, uh, and gets you, hey, pastor, hey, pastor. I said, okay, yes. And she began to tell me, this is what, we need you to come, we need you, we need you to come. I said, okay, I'm going to make sure, let me get back, I'm going to check everything, and then I'm, whatever I got to do, I'm going to do it to be here. Amen. And so I'm here by the grace of God. Amen. And so praise God. But that's what real friends do. Hey, come on, somebody. I count him as a friend. Bishop is my friend. And I often tell him, I say, you, you two friends. Amen. I got two friends. You both of them. That's what I tell him that. Amen. I got two of them. You both of them. Come on, somebody. Amen. But we, we, we had just we just come off recently, we was on a series about um, uh, the, the seven signs of real friendship or real friend. And one of those signs, it says that a real friend will celebrate life with you. Uh, yeah. Amen. And a real friend will, uh, will, go, will be with you through trouble, good times, and bad times. Amen. A real friend. Now, you got some people, they'll be with you only in uh, the good times. Uh, uh-huh. Somebody said, that's right. Yeah, I hear that. And then when the bad times come, you can't find them. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Praise God. But I need to, I need to, that's it. Uh-huh. I need some real, I need some real friends. Come on, somebody. Amen. And so this is my friend. Amen. We're going to get into the word of the Lord. Praise God. Let's get into God's word. I know you all have your thing, and it's a good thing, and I'll, uh, I'll just at least do the scripture. But if you all will allow me to kind of change or go, you know, uh, the route that I feel that I believe that will, will be a blessing uh, to our leaders as well as the people of God. Amen. And your, you all's thing uh, uh, this morning, praise God. And uh, I saw the theme about we've come this far. Well, you've come this far by faith and we're celebrating, amen, leadership, celebrating leadership, amen, courageous leadership, amen, taken from Isaiah, uh, I believe it is 41 and 10. It talks about fear not, and uh, for I'm with you. Praise God. And that's, we know God is speaking. When God tells you to fear not, that means don't fear. Amen. Praise God. He silenced your fear and encourages your faith. Amen. And sometimes our, 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 our fears need to be silenced, and our faith need to be encouraged. Amen. Come on, somebody. And certainly we're praying for Amen. My, my brother Bobby, too. We're praying. Our sense of prayer, we're praying for him. And I know God is even in a healer. God can do anything, uh, amen, but fail. Praise God. So, uh, but let me turn over to, amen, uh, Galatians, if you don't mind, the sixth chapter, if you would. Galatians, the sixth chapter. Amen. I'm hearing that sound. When I hear that sound like that, you will make me want to do something. But I'm, I got to stay focused. Mm-hmm. Y'all pray for my voice because I all week long going, but amen. But when you pray, things happen. All right, I don't don't let me get in. See, let me. I got. Let me concentrate here. You'd be throwing my concentration off. Like, let me concentrate. 
bread of heaven. Don't let me down. Yeah. Sent down from the glory. <laughs> Many. All right. You were on earth. You are a carpenter. A carpenter. You, you are, are the living one. Now, see, I knew you was going to hit the snare and do, uh, hit that symbol. I knew that. I, I knew you was going to do that. Okay. Amen. Let me say that too. I appreciate and thank God for my, my church. Amen. Praise God. Revival Center. I appreciate them. I love me some Revival Center. And they know I, I miss them today. Amen. On Palm Sunday. I miss my Revival Center. But they know it. Amen. But uh, they'll be waiting for me when I get back. Amen. We'll be all right. Um, Galatians 6 chapter. Let's look at verse Verse 6, verse 6 through verse 9. Verse 6 through verse 9. Amen. Verse 6 through verse 9. Amen. How many of y'all ready for it? Amen. Amen. Now, and it says, uh, Galatians 6, verse 9, it says, Let him that is taught in the word communicate. Somebody said communicate. communicate. Under him that teacheth in all good things. Be not deceived, God is not marked. For whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. Verse 8, For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to his spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. Somebody said life everlasting. And let us not be weary in do well-doing. Excuse me. And let us not be weary in well-doing. For in Due season. Somebody shout due season. due season. We shall reap if we faint not. I come this morning to speak to your due season. Somebody shout due season. Due season. Look at somebody else and tell them I speak to your due season. Well, let me just, let me, let me, let me kind of change that. Look at another person and say, I speak to your season. But would y'all point to our leader and say, I speak to your due season. Shout it again. Say, Pastor, I speak to your due season. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your spirit. Thank you for these here, your people and your manservant. Give us ears to hear, eyes to see, and a heart to understand. Forgive us of our sins, we pray. Rebuke the enemy on every hand. Bind the works of Satan and cast the devil out. In Jesus' name, and we thank you for the victory. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. may be seated. This is a very encouraging scripture for leadership to, to the leaders if we now we must understand that the apostle Paul writes to the church of Galatia we call it or Galatians if you would and most of this book of two Galatians is written for instructions amen to the church it's written, it's written for and parts of it correction but for the most part, instructions. What he's writing now is he's getting, getting closer and coming out of. Now don't, don't go too far with from me. Wait, that, that's, my, that's my girl. And that's you know, it's good to see you. But he's, as he's coming out 
closer out of this chapter. First, he talks about, in this chapter, he says, man be overtaken and fault you which are spiritual. So he deals in the area of somewhat of just maybe uh, forgiveness and, and uh, being prayerful and, and uh, restoring, bringing restoration to our brother or our sister. But then he comes down through this chapter, he kind of turns the curve, Pastor. And he says, those who are taught, let them communicate. Let them communicate. Let them communicate uh, unto him that teacheth in all good things. Now, the word communicate is, uh, doesn't necessarily mean, in this verse, it doesn't necessarily mean having a conversation. But this word communicate simply means, amen, to uh, reciprocate in your um, financial, uh, you know, your financial, your mater financial material goods, if you would. In other words, praise God, he's saying, when you've been taught by the man or the woman of God, amen, or your leader, whatever may, amen, you may be under, praise God, as leadership, it is befitting, it is proper, amen, it is right cordially, and it is right, amen, and it is responsive, praise God, or you have the responsibility to give back to what you have received. Amen. amen. And so he says, let him that is taught. You got to do, you got to be willing to do it. We're going somewhere. Tell somebody we're going somewhere. We got just a little ways to get there, but we're going to try to cross the fence, but we're going somewhere. Then he tells them now, he says, if you've been taught, amen, don't forget to communicate or to give to what you've been taught because you must understand when the man of God a man is sowing seeds into your life from the word of God. Because you do know, amen, that the word, when the preacher, the pastor, the leader, when he sows into the life or he's preaching or teaching, he's sowing into the life of the people of God. He is sowing seeds. As a matter of fact, Jesus talks about it, I believe, in, the, in Matthew, the, the 13th chapter, when he talks about the, seed, the, sower, uh, uh, the, the one who sows, amen, the seed and the sower. The seed is the word of God. Amen. It's just like a farmer that plants seeds. As a matter of fact, when Jesus was talking in that setting, he was talking because Jesus was very intentional when he was conversating or talking to, amen, his audience. He knew, praise God, when he was talking to the group of farmers, amen, he would bring out the parable about uh, uh, agriculture or, or farming. When we was talking, and when he's talking about, amen, talking to those, a praise God, who were on, who were fishermen, and those who, praise God, who labored in the sea or on water, he dealt with, amen, those who knew how to fish. So he was very intentional with the crowds that he was dealing with, amen. Praise God. But he was saying that, praise God, uh, the, so the sower, amen, and the seed. The sower is the, the one who is sowing or giving the word of God, who is teaching. Amen. But the seed is the word that goes out. And you must understand, praise God, when the pastor or the leader, praise God, is teaching you the word of God and preaching, amen, praise God. There are actually four grounds that the word or the seed, which is the word of God, is going into. The first ground, amen, is talking about the ground. Now, you must understand, what is the ground, Pastor? I'm glad you asked. The ground is the heart, amen, praise God, where the seed or the word is going into. So when this seed or the word of God is being preached, that means, amen, your heart is the ground which the seed goes into. And so we have four uh, uh, grounds, if you would. Amen. You have what you call the wayside. Somebody say wayside. Not west side, but wayside. 
because somebody can get that mixed up. Amen. Wayside is, praise God, is all those that when the word goes forth, it says some fell by the wayside. Amen. That meant, praise God, and that meant when the word was going forth, it never germinated. It just fell by the wayside. So that meant they didn't get anything. Some people come to church, y'all ain't saying nothing. As much as the pastor is teaching, preaching, amen, speaking, praying, prophesying, laying hands, and some folks not getting anything. Amen. Come on, somebody. Oh, I know I got the right message this morning. Amen. And then, praise God, then you have uh, uh, the, the next ground because it's the fourth. Praise God, the, west, the, the, the wayside, not the west side, but the wayside. Amen. And then you have, uh, praise the name of the Lord. Let's go to what he talks about right there real quickly. Let me show you. Amen. I don't want to miss, mess it up or, or, or miss it. Praise God. Come on, somebody. At the, the 13th chapter, praise God. And the fourth verse, uh, Matthew, he says, And when he sowed, some seeds fell by the wayside, and the fowls came and devoured them up. Amen. Praise God. The next seed, praise God. Amen. Or the next ground, some fell upon stony places where they had uh, not much earth. And forthwith, uh, they sprang up because they had no depthness of earth. Y'all ain't saying that. And when the sun was up, that means, praise God, when it got heated, Praise God, when, it, when some heat got to it, pray y'all ain't saying nothing. Amen. It got a little heated. Amen. Some folks can't stand pressure. Amen. They used to tell you if you can't stand it, hey, praise God, if you can't stand the heat, get out the kitchen. Y'all ain't saying nothing. But look like sometimes folks, praise God, when trouble comes, folks got a habit of running from trouble. But sometimes God wants you, no, God wants you to stay, stay there. Hang in there. Amen. Don't give up. Hang in there. Praise God. Come on, somebody. But it says, praise, praise the name of the Lord. It said, and it scorched, were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. They had no depthness, no root. Y'all ain't saying nothing. If that word didn't get no root in there, you'll find yourself, praise God, when things start getting thick, and uh, uh, amen, you'll start thinning out. When things start getting heated, Y'all ain't saying nothing. You don't have no root. You can't stand. Come on, somebody. Praise the name of the Lord. And had no depthness. Praise the name of the Lord. And it withered away. And then some fell on the thorns. Uh, amen. Among thorns and the thorns sprung up and it choked them. Praise God. It choked them. Hey, praise God. You know, some folks got to be careful because, amen, you got to be careful when, when you ask for a blessing. What do you say when you ask for a blessing? What do you mean by asking for a blessing? Some folks, praise God, got to be careful because some folks really can't stand to be blessed. And the reason why I say this is because some folks will be praying, God bless me with a town car. God bless you with a town car, amen, you drive all across town and never drive the church. God bless you with a house on a hill. God bless you with a house on a hill. Amen. He blessed you with that house. You've been praying, God bless me with that house. He blessed you with a house on a hill. You spend more time with the house on the hill than you do in God's house. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Come on, somebody. And it amazes me now because we've, saw, we've seen a great falling away, and, 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 and particularly during this pandemic. Amen. I said this pandemic, Pastor, have done, to, uh, praise God. It either drew you, amen, closer to God or drew you away from God. And you found out who was really solid. Amen. Praise God. Everybody you thought during this pandemic, there were folks that I thought was real solid that really had it together. Only to find out, praise God, they were shallow. They didn't have enough depthness, no depthness in them. Praise God. And one reason is because they didn't take time to allow the word to germinate in their heart so they can stay fixed and stay shadow. 
And so that's why we see now, praise God, the people are falling away. We see people now who are not, there are more people now, amen, believe it or not, more people are backsliding who've been in church for years, amen, are falling out of fellowship, praise God, amen, y'all ain't saying nothing. Amen. Out of, praise God, the ark of safety. Pray out of church, out of fellowship, out of the house of God where the saints are coming together to be blessed. Amen. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Praise the name of the Lord. They rather, amen, lay on the couch and watch service. Amen. Rather than to come in the house of service, of the house of the Lord. And y'all ain't saying nothing. But there's only so much that you can get at home that you cannot get in the sanctuary. Come on, somebody. Amen. Praise God. You can lay at home all you want. Praise God. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Praise the name of the Lord. But let me tell you, there's a presence when you come into the house of God. Amen. There is a feeling when you come into the house of God. There is joy when you come into the house of God. And there is a promise when you come into the house of God. God promised it when you come to the doors. Y'all ain't saying nothing. What he'll do for you. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. So we've seen so many people have started falling away. Amen. From the faith. Praise God. Amen. Backsliding. Going back. I've never seen so many. Praise God. Amen. Uh, I, I thought that they were believers. I thought that they were believers. But I've never seen so many. Amen. Now. Praise God. Amen. They're on Facebook and they're parading it now. But all on Facebook. Praise God. Amen. They're at the club and everything going back. Y'all ain't saying. Come on somebody. How you go from the altar to the club? Y'all ain't saying nothing. Amen. Come on somebody. Amen. It, it gives me to know that, praise God, because of this pandemic, praise God, yes, it shook our faith. Praise the name of the Lord. But God has given us his word and his spirit, amen, to sustain us. Y'all ain't saying nothing. To keep us, amen, praise God, in the hour of temptation, in the hour of our trial, in the hour of our tribulation. Amen. Come on, somebody. He said, I will sustain you. I will uphold you with the right hand of my righteousness I won't let you fail and that's a promise and all God's promises are yea and in him are amen you can take that to the bank when God tells you something Amen. y'all ain't saying nothing amen and when God have destiny over your life I don't care how many devils in hell come against you and speak against you. I don't care how many witches and warlocks, amen, put salt around your, your, your door. I don't care what they do. Y'all ain't saying nothing. I don't care how many dimes they throw at your feet. Y'all ain't saying nothing. The devil is a liar. When God said you got destiny, when God says... Yes. So that's what we find when Jesus was talking about those different grounds. Praise God. It says that uh, the, the stony ground is because, amen, praise God, they got choked up. In other words, the, it choked the word. They got a little bit, amen, but it, just, it didn't get enough because it didn't stay long enough. They didn't stay around the fire long enough. They didn't stay around the saints long enough. They didn't stay around the altar long enough. They didn't stay around the leader long enough. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Hallelujah. So understanding the importance it is, amen, praise God, to be uh, consistent, to be solid in God. Amen, praise God. And so the last ground we find that it is good ground. The good ground is when the word goes in, germinate. Amen. Y'all know, y'all really want to know what the good ground, how you can tell when the good ground, amen, praise God. Y'all know, y'all really want to know when, when, when you get, when it falls on good ground. 
Amen. On Sunday mornings, everybody, people, a lot of people, well, those that will come back to church, that on Sunday mornings, it is believed to be said. I'm in the house right at that time. It is, it, it is believed to be said that people on Sunday mornings, people come because they, on Sunday mornings, because they love their pastor. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, that, that's what has been said. And it's because they want to, pastor, I'm here. I want, the pastor, I want the pastor to see me. I'm here. And many times the pastor, while you all, when you all as parishioners were coming in, and you say, oh, hey, Sister Sally. Hey, oh, they go Brother Bob. Hey, they go Sister, Sister Sue. Oh, they go Brother Tim. Hey, Brother Tim, hey. You know, you, you're looking at everybody who's here. But when the pastor and the leader stands up, praise God, he's looking at, uh, amen, through the, through the congregation, he's looking at everybody who's not here. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. And that's one, one of the reasons why when you come into the sanctuary, whatever sanctuary it should be, praise God. Amen. The center point. Amen. The, the ministry or the church or the congregation or the uh, or sanctuary, if you would. Amen. Is the, the center point. Come on, somebody. Is the center point. <laughs> Amen. That's why it's centrally located right in the middle of the sanctuary. Amen. Praise God. Right, right in the middle, you have the middle aisle. Come on, somebody. Most churches will acknowledge that and will do that. Amen. Because why? The attention, praise God, it should be on the word of God that's being delivered. Come on, somebody. And it is believed to be said that if you have Sunday night, if they make the sacrifice to come back for Sunday night, if you have Sunday night service, amen, it says that then people, they love their church. Uh -huh. Oh, it, Pastor, it was a sacrifice, but I'm here tonight. I come back because you know at the morning service you go home and rest is calling you the rest of the day. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Our bodies look like that. If you don't really know it, our bodies like that. That that time clock. That clock. That timed. Amen. After Sunday worship service, come on somebody. Your body is timed. Amen. Eat a good meal and go to sleep. Amen. Praise God. And see y'all the next time. Amen, walls. Praise God. But it is said that those who press and those who, amen, that attend midweek Bible study. They say, amen, they love the Lord. Y'all ain't saying nothing. So you just figure out what category you fit in. Amen. If we just only see you Sunday morning, amen, we know, amen, and that's good. You're supposed to love the pastor. Amen. Come on, somebody. If we only see you just Sunday day, Sunday night, we know you love the pastor in the church. But if we see you Sunday day, Sunday night, and Bible studying on you, better not hunt. We know you love the Lord. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Praise the name of the Lord. So it's good ground. And the Lord revealed to me, Pastor. He revealed to me. He revealed to me. I was in Shunday. And the Lord was revealing to me. Praise God. He said, listen, I'm giving you revelation concerning those seeds when the word is going out. He said, really, praise God. He said, in, in, in reality, amen, because in that chapter you'll find it says some 30, some 60, some 100 fold. And we equate that a lot of times with, our, with the giving. Uh, you know, especially after we pray of the, the blessing over the offering and bless some 30, some 60, some 100 fold, you know. But the Lord gave me a even a revelation, praise God, as it relates to the grounds. He said, now I want you to take the three grounds because, amen, to take the, the three grounds. The first ground, don't even count that because that's wayside. It's wasted. 
Eight, y'all ain't saying nothing. But the third, the next three grounds, you can count that as some 30, 60, and 100. So I, I stopped getting, I was, I was getting frustrated. I said, why is people not getting it? Why what look like they're not getting it? Why is after I preached, praise God, all, and preached all, all, my, 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 my jacket off almost and, and my clothes wringing wet and I didn't talk the word of God. And then after that, praise God, somebody who's been in the service the whole time, come back, amen, and knock on the door. Oh, they have a question. Praise the name of the Lord. Uh, Pastor. Uh, pastor, uh, what, what did they say? What did they do? Why are we doing this here? What, what was that said? Wait a minute. Did you hear the message? Did you hear the message? Or were you paying attention? Y'all ain't saying nothing. Come on, somebody. And so now... <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. And so now, praise God, praise God. So now, praise, amen. Did, did you hear the message? What happened? And so the Lord encouraged me. He said, don't, don't get frustrated. You just keep on sowing those seeds. Yeah. He said, because when people come to church, amen, everybody ain't on the same level. Amen. He said, so you're going to have some 30, yeah. some 60. Yeah. Then you're going to see those hundred folds. Y'all ain't saying nothing. He says, so just run with the hundredfold. Hey, come on, somebody. You're going to have some that have only going to get 30%. Some that's only going to get 60% of it. And then you're going to get that hundred percent. Oh, yeah, there's a hundred. Somebody is a hundred. But you got that hundred percent. Amen. Because you're going to see the fruit of it. You're going to see the response of it. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Amen. They're going to love God. They're going to love the church. They're going to love their pastor. They're going to love everything what God has called them to do. Y'all ain't saying nothing. And so now, amen, I got to almost hurry up here. But now we see back in Galatians. We understand. I want y'all to hear this because, praise God, Paul writes to them and says, I want y'all to understand the importance of support. Supporting leadership, supporting the leader. He said, you, don't may, you may not realize it, but when I begin to dig deep into this, amen, this chapter and did some research, more research, amen, he says, listen, what I want you to do, I want you to understand how important it is to communicate, amen. If you've been taught, praise God, the word of God, you got to reciprocate, you got to give back to Amen. Praise God. And then he says, be not deceived. God is not marked. For whatsoever man soweth, soweth, giveth, that shall he also receive. And many times we equate that and take that as, well, you know that person, they did that to this. They're going to get it back. It's going to come back to them. Yes, yes. But in this, uh, this setting, he was talking about those with their monetary gifts. He was letting them know, and I'm going to prove it in a minute, because when he started off, he said, amen. When he talked about it, he says, now, let him that is taught communicate or to give. Amen. And then I said, well, why did he say that? Why, why would he come back and say, amen, be not deceived, God is not marked. You can't mark God. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Or you can't make fun of God, especially in the area of giving and particular to leadership. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Amen. Because what you give and make happen for the leader, God gives back to you and make happen for you. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Then he goes on and turns a curve here. Yeah. I say, Paul, Paul, why you hit me so hard like this? <laughs> then he goes on to say, for he that sow it to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that sow it to the spirit shall of the spirit reap ever life everlasting. He literally says, when you take your money, your pastoral anniversary money, and go to Walmart and say, the pastor don't need it. I need to spend this because I know this is the pastor anniversary money, but uh, I need to get, get me a new pair of shoes. 
Or when you go to Macy's. When you go to the mall. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Or when you go, if you go to the club, Lord have mercy, help us. Wherever you taking the money that, that's, that, that is designated or allotted for the leader. You are literally sowing to your flesh. You are sowing. You don't realize that when you take, amen, the man of God's monies that really belong to him. When I say belong to him is because he started off by saying, let him that is taught communicate. Now, don't, don't, don't he said, don't, don't get it twisted now. Because after you, you do know that you did get a good meal, he's been teaching you, been feeding you. Amen. Praise God. And you know, it is proper. If you go to a restaurant, amen, a good restaurant, y'all ain't saying nothing. And the service has been good, you normally leave a tip. Lisa, I hope you do at least. <laughs> Some folks don't do that. But you should at least, leave, if the service is good. Hey, come on, somebody. And I look like I, I know and know the service been good here. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Amen. Y'all ain't saying nothing because you're still here. Amen. Come on, somebody. You're still flowing. You're still going. Amen. You're still being taught. Amen. You're still laboring. Praise God. Even through the pandemic, so many churches and ministries and ministers have fallen back and given up. It is reported that, amen, that 1,500 pastors a month walk away from the pulpit. And for the purpose of the pressure and the disappointment that they receive, amen, praise God, but they feel unappreciated. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Come on, somebody. And so now, praise God, and so in this, praise God, not realizing that when you take, uh, amen, the pastoral anniversary, good shepherds, monies that's designated for the leader, you are and going to somewhere and spending it somewhere, amen, that you really, that it belongs, should be going to the right place, to the right hands, to the right person. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Amen. Praise God. I, and, I, and when I was uh, traveling across the, the country, I would see, and I was wondering, I said, ooh, when the preacher was preaching, praise God, and you saw people uh, getting up, you know, giving and, and going and, and giving to their, amen, while they were ministering and preaching. Well, some of them probably understand and understood, praise God, that they went, as they're receiving, amen, then they're giving. Come on, somebody. Amen. And so understanding that but when you have a set man, praise God, in a set place. And you got to understand, thank God for the gift of pastoring. Because pastoring is a gift. Y'all ain't saying nothing. We have the, what we call, we call fivefold. You got the, uh, amen, apostolic or the apostle. You have the prophet. You have the evangelist. You have the pastor, amen, who is the, on, on that fivefold we call, which is to represent the ring finger. He's stationary. Y'all ain't saying nothing. So he don't, amen, he don't bounce back and go and jump there, go and evangelize. And he may do it, but if he's called to pastoring, he's stationary. He's positioned. Amen. And he's not a hireling. A hireling just wants your money. Amen. Ain't concerned about your soul. Y'all ain't saying nothing. A fly by nighter. Y'all ain't saying nothing. All he wants is to give me my paycheck and I'm out of here. I'll see y'all when I see you. I ain't caring about I'm not concerned about you. Don't call me. Amen. I don't, don't visit me. Don't call me. I don't want listen. All I want is my money. That's a, a hireling. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Praise God. But when you have a real man of God who loves God, who is laboring, who is feeding you the word of God. How dare we take advantage of them? How dare we take them for granted? How dare? Y'all ain't saying nothing. 
Hallelujah. Amen. A lot of times we spend more time, praise God, celebrating other people than we do our own who've labored with us. The Bible says, know them that labor among you. You got to know them. Hey, y'all ain't saying nothing. God says in Jeremiah, amen. If you really read that and research it, you'll find that out. He said in Jeremiah, the th- third chapter, 15, verse 15, he said, I've, amen, I'll give you pastors according to my heart that will lead or feed you with knowledge and what? Understanding. Y'all ain't saying nothing. With knowledge and what? It is the direct responsibility, amen, for the pastor, amen, to feed you with knowledge and understanding. Amen. I I know y'all want all of y'all like all the the extras and the luxuries that go along with pastoring. But can I tell you this here? Amen. Pastor, praise God. Amen. He thank God. Thank God he'll be a friend to you, but he's not just your friend. He's not just your buddy. He's not just your ace boom coon. Come on, somebody. Y'all ain't saying nothing. He is your pastor. Y'all ain't, come on, somebody. And sometimes, praise God, we take it for granted. Hey, come, hey, y'all, now y'all getting quiet on me. And his responsibility is to feed you with knowledge. I know somebody say, oh, Pastor, are you going to hang out with me? No. Not today because I got a study to feed you. And praise God. Now, now you want me to be your friend. I'm your friend today. But if I have to rebuke you, amen, tomorrow, could you stay in there? Could you hang in there? Would you, keep, would you come back if I have to re- correct you and rebuke you? Y'all ain't saying nothing. Amen. We got one new member. One member. She, she's coming. She just, she, and she loved, she loved God. She loved God. And she comes, she said, uh, the pastor, first lady, well, I just love y'all. I love you. I love y'all. We we'll just love y'all. I said, okay, I, I, I prove it. Okay, keep on. Keep on. I know you do. Prove it. You love, we love you. And she do. She really do. She do. But I said, now, I, I want you to keep that same love if I have to rebuke you. Keep that same love if I have to correct you or chastise you. I want you to keep the same love. Amen. Come back and tell me, Pastor, I love you. I love you. But first lady, we love you if I have to correct you. Because if you can stand correction, amen. Pray, y'all ain't saying nothing. Then are you sons and daughters and not bastards according to the scripture. It's tight, but it's right in here. Woo, Jesus, Lord, help us. Amen. And so his responsibility is to feed you with knowledge and understanding. Now, that's his responsibility. Amen. And you all been getting, I can tell you've been getting fed. Because mm-hmm. you really you're pleasantly plump spiritually. And I mean, so. mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, y'all been getting fed naturally and spiritually. You can tell. Can't you tell, Pastor? Can't you tell? I'm trying to. Amen. I praise the name of the Lord. But your responsibility as followers, parishioners, your direct responsibility is found, praise God. Uh, I believe it is in the, uh, Hebrews, like the 13th chapter, verse 17, somewhere, where it says, Obey them that have rule over you. And submit yourselves, amen, submit yourselves for they watch for your soul, not your pocketbook, but your soul, amen, come on, praise God, but they watch for your soul as they must do it with joy and not with grief, because if they have to do it with grief, it's unprofitable to you, and what, what, what are you trying to profit? We're trying to really profit heaven. But it's unprofitable to you if we don't learn to obey and submit to the rule. And I know some of y'all say, we, I'm pastor, I'm grown too. Pastor, I'm grown. 
But that's why I'm glad he said, the writer said, obey them to have rule. Now, y'all know what a ruler is. You get the ruler from rule. Amen. Praise. And rule is a measuring stick. Y'all ain't saying nothing. It's a measuring stick. Amen. And that measures. Amen. And, and it gives you how far to go. It gives you the dimensions. It, it's, a, it's measuring. So you won't, amen, get too far off. Off track. Y'all ain't saying nothing. So, amen. So that's why he had to root. You ain't my daddy. You ain't my daddy. You know, who you thinking? Wait, hold it, hold it. No, I'm not your daddy, but I'm your pastor. Amen. And as a matter of fact, you don't realize, but I have, I have the key to, to open and unlock. Praise God. The, you know, now, now I'm going another, Lord help me. God has given the key to the pastor to open, to unlock, and to bind your soul. He told Peter, thou Peter, he said, I, Peter, I have given you the keys with the leader to the kingdom. And whatsoever, which really means whosoever, you bind on earth, I'm going to bind it in heaven. And whoever you loose on earth, I'm going to loose in heaven. Y'all ain't saying nothing. That's why you can't play with the preacher. Because God has given him authority to bind and to loose. Y'all ain't saying nothing. That's why he says in Hebrews, where I just went, he says, because for he watched for your soul as he must give an account. I cannot give an account of your soul Amen. If you are a, well, praise God. If you're not in check, in roll call, in fellowship, amen, and you at the movies and you should be at the show, I mean, that, no, not at the show, but at church. Come on, because some of y'all be going to the show when it's movie time, when it's church time. But if you're somewhere where you have no business being, amen, praise God, other than being in church where you can give an account, praise God, because he got to give an account, praise God. He's watching for your soul, and your soul shouldn't be all over this place, all over the city when it's time for church and fellowship to be fed. I know I'm talking, this is the pastor's anniversary, isn't it? Y'all call me and this is a pastor's anniversary. I, I, I love when y'all call, call me pastor's anniversary, right? Amen. Because I preach, and praise God. This anniversary, I preach Christ and the leader. Come on, somebody. Praise the name of the Lord. So I got to hurry with this here now because I'm over to well over time. It says, now he says, uh, uh, for he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap everlasting life everlasting. So it means when you do what's right concerning the man of God, it's tied into, amen, you don't, y'all don't believe it, it's right here. That's, it's tied into your destiny of between, really, in, really between heaven and hell. Y'all, it's right there, in the, right there. He says life everlasting. If you do what's right, amen, you're connected to life everlasting. But if you do what's wrong, amen, you're bringing damnation and destruction and corruption, amen, to your own soul. So you got to remember when it's, even if it don't have to be just pastoral anniversary, it's any time when he opens this book and sow the seed of the word of God to you. Hey, Y'all ain't saying nothing. Now I'm beginning to understand that, praise God, and from the old, old school church, praise God, they taught us 
that you don't come empty handed first into the house of God and then when you greet the leader amen you really shouldn't come empty handed because you should always have a little something little something something, something in your hand amen and say pastor hey, don't just tell him you love him but show him some little love Put a little, y'all ain't saying nothing Put a little something in the pocket there. Put a little something. Y'all ain't, put a little something in the, in the little, you know, square pocket there. Put a little something there. They pass it there. Y'all, come on. Are y'all, anybody with me today? Huh? I, I, I'm helping us today is because, praise God, sometimes we take leadership for granted. And as I was stating earlier, sometimes, praise God, we'll support everybody else. We'll go every place else. Amen. But those who labor among us. I, t- I said to one, one young lady, praise God, a member of the church, she wanted to go to a conference. It was in Atlanta. Amen. I won't tell the conference because y'all know what it is. Uh, some women's kind of woman down. The- I mean, excuse me. Uh, but but, but uh, she wanted to go to a conference. Excuse me. She wanted, to, she, wanted to, she wanted to go to a conference. Amen. Amen. She wanted to go to a conference. And that's all I said. You know what? Uh, that, that's fine. I said, um, she said, now, Pastor, my car, my car is not the best, but we're going to try to make it down there. Now, I was saying to myself, if your car is not the best, but you're trying to go to Atlanta, uh, and you won't much come to the house of God, and you live almost around the corner. So, you know, no wonder. So... <laughs> And I said, okay, well, I said, okay, well, that's fine. And I released the gold. Go, go ahead. But, amen. And that's another thing. Make sure that you get released. Amen. Wherever you go or do something, talk to your pastor. Amen. Let him get the blessings and the covering of your leader. Amen. Pastor, I'm getting ready to go out of town. Could you just pray for me? Amen. And, and I need your prayers and your blessings and your covering. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Don't just walk off and don't tell the pastor, but then he got to find out three in the morning when you called him or somebody called him from the hospital and found out, amen, that you were in the hospital because you didn't get his blessings and covering and prayers. And so I asked, I said, well, tell me what route you're going to date. Amen. She tell me what route you're going. She said, well, I'm going to go through, uh, you know, I'm going to go through Indianapolis, then back con- through Kentucky, then through Kentucky, I'm going to go through Tennessee, and then to Tennessee, and then getting close to Atlanta. I said, that's good. I said, okay. Uh, okay, that's fine. I said, now, let me just throw this in for, just, just, just think about this. I said, now, if perhaps... Uh, if you get, if you break down or get stopped or, or stop or something happens uh, somewhere, maybe in Tennessee, uh, you know, somewhere like that, getting you on your way to Atlanta, I said, uh, who are you going to call? I said, well, you, do you think, could you call the conference chairperson? Uh, you think that they're going to... She said, what? Why did you mean? Why? Why did you mean? What are you talking about? I said, yeah, you, uh-huh. Uh-huh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, so, so uh, uh, I said, yeah, see if they, if, you, if they will come back and help you. See if you can get some assistance. If they will come back. I said, no, you know what? You won't get no assistance from me. Matter of fact, uh, they won't even, you try to call there, they won't even respond. They won't even know your name. Y'all ain't saying nothing. You'll be on the side of the road. Tell them your name and tell them what you tr- you're trying to get to the conference. And tell them the leader of the conference. Tell them to get to them. And now my name is such and such. I'm trying to get to the conference and see if you get there. Amen. Come on, somebody. And then you're going to find out. Y'all, y'all looking at me funny. Praise God. Then you turn around. You'll find out, amen, who you have to really call. You turn around. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. And then I said, you find out, you got to turn around, call home, or pastor, or the leader, or whoever you got to call, and we're going to be there to help you. Why? Because you know them that labor among you. Amen. Come on, somebody. People you don't know, you're trying to follow and support. You don't even know them. You don't know what lifestyle. You don't know where they've been, what they're doing. You don't know what's going on. Come on, somebody. But you're ready to support. Praise God. But you don't know. Y'all looking at me funny. Amen. And so understanding, praise God, we support a lot of times everybody but our own. So Paul says, after this, he says, amen, this is what I want you to do. And I'm concluding. 
in verse 9, he turns his back to the congregation. He said, I didn't talk to y'all long enough. He turns his back now to the congregation and he talks to the leader. And he says now to the leader, I didn't talk to them. I gave them instructions. And now he goes on to tell the leader, he says, and let us not be weary. I'm getting ready to get up out of here now. Let us not be weary in well-doing. He says, let us not be weary. I know you've been hurt. I know some folks walked out on you. I know some folks talked about you. Left you, amen, hanging out there to dry. I know they didn't support you like they should have. I know you got disappointed at times. Hold on. But he turned around and told the preacher, he said, I want you to know that if everybody walk out on you and you don't have no more support, he said, let us not be weary in well-doing. Keep on doing good. Keep on preaching the word. Keep on teaching the word. Keep on following God. Keep on doing what God told you to do. Because sometimes people don't understand. They don't understand, amen, the responsibility of leadership. It looks easy. Hallelujah. It looks glamorous. But you don't know a lot of the headaches. You don't know some of the struggles that go with leadership. You don't know sometimes you have to cry at night and your pillow become uh, oh become a sheet to wipe your eyes you don't know sometime after you get through preaching after you get through teaching after you keep through going on sometime after you get through ministering them, after you get through telling people, encouraging them, uh, sometimes uh, the preacher need encouragement. Uh, sometimes uh, he needs somebody uh, to tell him, you can make it. Uh, you can make it. Uh, oh, yeah. It amazes me. Uh, Mother, it amazes me that sometimes uh, people will call you uh, late in the midnight hour uh, and they're concerned about their own, uh, their own business. Uh, they want the preacher uh, when they need him. Hallelujah. But I found out uh, that when the preacher need uh, somebody, uh, someone to lean on, uh, there's nobody there. Oh, yeah. I looked at Jesus. Uh, hallelujah. Uh, when they took him to, um, uh, to judgment hall, uh, when they took him to the court, uh, and he stood before Pilate. Uh, hallelujah. Uh, in his time uh, of agony, uh, where were the people? Uh, hallelujah. Uh, when they beat him, uh, when they whooped him, uh, where was uh, where was blind by the maze? Uh, where were all of the people uh, that he healed? Uh, where were all of the people uh, that he touched? Uh, where were all of the people uh, that he helped? Uh, where were they? Uh, oh yeah. Even the disciples, they didn't understand. When he was in the garden, Jesus said, can't you stay awake with me? I need your assistance. I 
I need some companionship. I need your help. Stay awake with me one hour. Hallelujah. You don't understand. I'm getting ready to die on the cross for the sins of the world. The weight of the world is getting ready to fall on my shoulders. I need some help. Somebody bear my arms. Somebody. Don't leave me by myself. Don't leave me out there to hang in the dry. I need somebody. You don't understand. You may not feel what I feel. You don't know what I have to deal with. You don't know. You don't know how many times and you don't know how many people I had to counsel. You don't know how many people I had to go to their bedside. You don't know how many grave sites I had to be at. You don't know how many hospitals I had to go visit. You don't know how many prisons I had to go visit. Oh yeah, oh yeah. You, you, you know. Oh, I feel God right now. Hallelujah. Come on, y'all got to follow me now. Come on, hallelujah. Take me up a little higher. Because I got to get out of here. Because I feel this engine is rounding up. We're getting ready for takeoff. Hallelujah. Jump to your feet. And everybody scream. We're getting ready to take off. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, we get ready to go higher. Higher. Jesus I got to leave you now but Paul he told the church he said look at here I didn't had enough of y'all I didn't gave you enough encouragement I didn't talk enough to them about you and to you I didn't help you long enough I didn't went to your families your family reunion I've been to the hospital I've been to the nursing home I've been to the graveside yeah 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 he said but let me now encourage the preacher because sometimes when people don't want to do right with leadership God got a way of encouraging his leaders yes Lord hallelujah Paul told them he said look at here I'm getting ready to get out of here but I want to encourage the preachers hallelujah he said and let us not be weary don't get weary in other words weary means I'm tired I'm frustrated I'm ready to quit you may not know it you may not discern it you may not consensus it hallelujah because it's not your trial because you're not the leader you don't feel the burden that leadership have hallelujah thank you Jesus but when somebody feel the burden of the leader hallelujah they'll pray they'll help him yeah and so he says let us not be weary in well doing for in due season he said in due season Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, in due season, hallelujah. He said, don't get weary in doing well. Don't get frustrated in doing well. 
Don't get tired in doing well. Don't get faint-hearted in doing well. Don't get pushed back in doing well. Hallelujah. Because what's about to come, you got what we call a due season. Now, can I tell the saints, guess what? Somebody say what? You got a season. Hallelujah. All the members, due season, don't belong to membership. But you just got a season. Look at your name and say, you got a season. God see your season. Hallelujah. But to the preacher, but to the preacher, he got due season. Hallelujah. Why you say he got due season? Why you say he got due season because he didn't been through and hallelujah you got to understand hallelujah in the area that we live in in the part of the country hallelujah we experience the four seasons of the year hallelujah we got what we call spring which is time we in now hallelujah and when springtime comes that means it's time to spring forth hallelujah at the spring Y'all ain't saying nothing. Then we got summer. Summer is where it gets real hot. Thank you, Jesus. And if you can stand, you can stand the pressure in the hottest time. You can make it to the next season. Hallelujah. Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, you got a season. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Then the next season... It's what we call autumn. Huh? That's fall. Huh? That's the time when you fall back. Huh? Hallelujah. Huh? That's the time huh? when you see the leaves huh? on the trees huh? start falling off. Huh? You start seeing huh? God's creation huh? for what it really is. Huh? But then it sets you up. Huh? Hallelujah. Huh? For the next season. Huh? Look at your name and say, neighbor, there's another season. Huh? It's called winter and that's when things are it gets a little cold sometimes yes Lord and thank God for winter because in the winter time hallelujah the cold helps now to curb infections diseases in the name of Jesus hallelujah thank you Jesus but I'm so glad y'all are privy to hallelujah you all uh, are privy to uh, you all uh, are due uh, your spring uh, your summer uh, your fall uh, and your winter oh uh, but I'm leaving you uh, goodbye congregation uh, go ahead and enjoy your season uh, but wow uh, we got one more season uh, look at your neighbor uh, and say neighbor uh, there's one more season it's called due season uh, it's due season uh, yes lord uh, I come to speak uh, to your due season uh, I come to prophesy to your due season I come to tell you God has not forgotten about you I come to tell you God what is due the word due means something that's old that's owing as a debt thank you Jesus natural or moral right that which is deserved God telling me to tell you I come to prophesy to bishop today to tell you don't worry about the people in their season because I'm getting ready I'm getting ready oh yeah I'm getting ready to give you due season what you deserved what you've been going through I'm getting ready thank you Jesus I got the clothes here hallelujah 
I just got an email. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I just got an email. Hallelujah. I got an email. Thank you, Lord. From heaven. It's telling me to tell you. Hallelujah. That I'm getting ready. Give you due season. And I'm giving it to you. I'm getting ready to express it. Express it to you. I'm getting ready. Hallelujah. In other words, it's going to be like Cash App. In other words, it's going to be like Giblify. In other words, Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh my 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 You got due season. I got an email. Another email. God telling me to tell you. Bishop, hallelujah. Pastor, great servant leader. He said, I'm getting ready. I just got the email. He said, I'm getting ready to make it up to you. Thank you, Jesus. He said, I see you in Joel, in the book of Joel, about the second chapter, somewhere around there. I'm getting ready. Thank you, Jesus. He said, the years, uh, hallelujah, the locusts uh, have eaten up uh, the canker worm, uh, the palmer worm, uh, all those other worms uh, that tried to eat you up. Uh, thank you, Jesus. Uh, tried to cause you to stumble and fall. Uh, thank you, Jesus. Uh, tried to give you to give up. Uh, tried to give you to give in. Uh, but you didn't quit. Uh, you hung on in there uh, even when you were tired uh, when you were frustrated uh, nobody saw you uh, nobody felt you uh, nobody heard your cry uh, but God say I heard your cry I've seen your tears uh, I've come to your rescue uh, hallelujah I got due season. I got due season. If anybody believe the pastor got due season, shout due season. Hallelujah. He got due season. And if he gets due season, y'all get the overflow. If he get due season, y'all get the overflow. Get it ready for overflow. I got to go to my seat, but get ready for overflow. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, we've been hanging in there. Hallelujah. We've been seeing everybody bless. Everybody being lifted up. Everybody. Hallelujah. Look like having what they need. God. God. After 29 years, oh, the reason why, the reason why God spared you, even through this pandemic, because he said, I couldn't wait until you got to this 29th year, because this 29th year is a very significant year. Three is the number of resurrection. Nine is the number of or two is the number of agreement. Three is the number of resurrection. God said, look at here. I'm getting ready because you've been agreeing. I'm getting ready to resurrect and then I'm getting ready to call some birthing. Look at your name and say, he getting ready to do it. He getting ready to do it. Hallelujah. He getting ready to do it. Do Caesar. Somebody say due season. Due season. Pastor, you got due season. You got due season. Hallelujah. Somebody point your hand to the leader. Just point and prophesy due season. Due season. Due season. 
God has heard your secret prayer. God has seen your tears. God has felt your spirit. God said, I come to see about you. I've come to see about you. The transitions that's been happening have not been for naught. God said, there is. I didn't even give you all, all the rest I'm through. But the three things that's about understanding about the due season. Hallelujah. One of them is it comes, due season comes after the rough season. The roughest season. The roughest season. Due season comes to inspire you, to encourage you to keep going. Due season gives you to know Hang on in there. Weeping may endure for night, but joy comes in the morning. They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. I know it's been rough, been tough. But everything that you've gone through, God says... He designed it for you to handle it. Because there is no temptation that's taking you such as common to man. But God, who is faithful, will not suffer you to be tempted above which you are able. But with the temptation, he'll make a way of escape that you may be able to bear it. God said, I didn't allow you to go through all what you've been going through and dealing with. To leave you out there, to hang you out to dry. God said, this is for your, for your betterment, for your good. Because we know that all things work together for the good of them who love the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And I speak long life. I speak health, wealth, prosperity of God multiple blessings increase favorable bonuses checks in the mail more than enough in the name of Jesus God we thank you in Jesus name come on let's give God some praise I want to pray for those, I don't know if we're online, but if you know, and even in the sanctuary, you said, Pastor, look like I've missed my season. Now, he got due season, so don't, y'all don't worry about him. He's covered. He's good now. But you said, Pastor, look like I done missed a season. I missed a season. Look like I'm out of season. Look like I've just been forgotten about. I'm out of season. Look like I'm in the wrong season. I'm talking to you, and even those of you who are watching, you say, look like I've been out of, out of fellowship, out of sequence, out of alignment, and I need to be in season. If that's you, I'm talking to you. If anyone in here, I want you to either raise your hand or you can come quickly to the altar, quickly, quickly. Don't hesitate. If that's you, that's it. Come, that's it, quickly. I'm talking to somebody in here. I'm on a mission and assignment today. Thank you, Jesus. I've been out of, a, out of alignment. It seemed like I missed my season, but I want to get back in my season. I know I have a season, and my pastor, he, he has to do season. I don't worry about that, but I need to get back in my season. I want to pray for you. Come on, stand up. Come quickly, quickly. Spread out quickly, quickly, quickly. I have some oil quickly if I can. Pastor, if it's okay. All right, I don't, I don't want to be out of order. Quickly, I want to pray. Those of you who are watching, you said, Pastor, I've been, this pandemic has 
cause me to get out of season. I've lost hope. I've lost focus. I've been out of alignment. I've been hanging in the balance. I've been out of fellowship. I've backslidden. Didn't want nobody to know it. That's you. You're watching. God is calling you back. He says, come back to him. Return back to me, and I'll return to you. Lift your hands. I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray for those who are watching. Those of you who are watching, ask God to forgive you. If you've never felt the presence of God, if you've never been saved, I want you to, wherever you're at, you're watching, you're driving your car, you pulled over, you just happened to scroll to this service. You said, and I know that he's talking to me. Lift your hands. Lift those hands in the sanctuary. Lift your hands wherever you are. If you're driving, pull over and lift your hands. And ask God, say, Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Come into my life. Deliver me now. Hallelujah. Save me. Give me the hope that I need. I confess Jesus Christ yeah. as Lord and Savior of my life. And I thank you, thank you Father. for forgiving me. Yeah. I'm coming back to God. Those of you yeah. watching, I'm coming Hallelujah. back to God. I'm coming back to God. That's it. That's it. You that's on that couch, you've been on that couch. Watch. I'm coming back to God. That's it. Come on back to God. Hallelujah. He's calling you. I, I, those of you, I see it in the spirit. Somebody's in that basement. They're washing clothes. I see you in the spirit. You said, that's me. He's calling you to come back to him. He says, repent. Come on back to me with open arms and I'll receive you. Those of you on this altar, lift your hands. Been out of alignment or out of sequence. Or you've just been... Uh, out of season look like I'm going to pray for you now lift those hands Father in the name of Jesus we pray for these right now who are on the altar the earth is yes the God God give them favor with you and with men let them fall in their season their right season and then let them help oh God what is necessary to the leader to uphold the leader's arms in his due season. In the name of Jesus. Woman, God says he's heard your prayer yeah. and your tears. God said what he allowed has and not been a mistake. It has not been a mistake. Oh, yes, shout by that that yes, God. Oh, be lift your hands. To lift your hands high, my brother. He watches me. God gonna give you peace in your why situation. So why you've been I in be a bound? you've been in a quiet storm. It's been a quiet, but it's been a storm, a quiet storm. When God has set me free. When God give me to turn it around. Why should I be bound with God is going to even help you with the hurt. Jesus He's going to even deal with it. For you and me. Daughter, God is going to, listen. God is giving you, God is allowing Lift you. Because your prayer. Lift to get back in alignment. All burn. of my burning. That's it. Oh, oh, oh. Burn yes, God. Up all the way. Hey. Oh, yes, sir. He is the keeper. God said, I'm getting ready to I'm getting ready to reward My you. Soul. The, I hear the Holy Spirit. He said, I'm getting ready to reward you with my presence. Don't worry about that. What, what else is going to come? He said, but I'm going to reward you with my presence. Hey. The key deeper of oh, my soul. My soul. Oh. soul. Lift your hands, honey. Lift your hands. 
Thank you, Lord. God, we God said he's gonna don't worry about them. He's gonna remove the that I just feel it. He's gonna just remove some things that look like that's been trying to hinder you or block or hinder you. Hinder you. He's gonna remove some things that's trying to hinder you. My savior, he watches. God got a plan for your life. Hey. God got a plan for your life, daughter. 